People aren't afraid of failing. You're afraid of failing in front of other people. You go as far as you believe you can go. As long as you love it, you have to keep going. You cannot quit. Top 10, top 10 I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. And men. All my life, like nine and nine. From my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine and nine. This one's for my top 10. Top 10. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, this is Nina Carmichael. This channel is created to help you overcome the number one challenges that is holding you back. A lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know that there is something greater inside you as well. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to attack the fear, belief, and become a shark. With Evan Carmichael and his top 10 rules for success. Volume number 14 and enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, attack the fear. People aren't afraid of failing. You're afraid of failing in front of other people. You'll sing in the shower, but you won't sing on the street corner. You'll record a video, but you'll never release it. You'll be your own biggest critic, but you won't at the same time also be your own biggest fan. That needs to change, starting today. So my biggest fear is disappointing people. I'm terrified of disappointing people. The idea that you would come to my Thought Leadership Academy and I would teach you how to win on social media and, and get the ideas out of your head and, and pay $2,000 to do it. The idea that, that you would come and be disappointed destroys me. And, and it's led to some positive things in that I always over deliver, I'm always obsessed, I'm always putting so much value to that. Even if you only get 10% of the value I'm giving, you still more than made the money that you invested into any of the stuff that I'm doing. But at the same time, it's still this fear. And so I, I wanna attack the fear. I teach myself to attack the fear. And I think you should too. Even just attacking it for the sake of attacking it is good. Even if it doesn't lead to a positive result for your business, it's good because you're building strength, because you're pushing your comfort zone, because you're getting better, because you're growing. That's worth something. That's a ton of value. Because if you can conquer your fear of doing this one thing, that translates to every area of your life. If you teach yourself to have more courage, that translates everywhere. So maybe you're afraid of, if you're on a cruise ship and they, they bring up couples and they do a game show, you're afraid of what might happen on that game, do it. How does that make you a better entrepreneur? It makes you a thousand times better as an entrepreneur. Because that's the same fear that you face in your business. That fear of going on that game show on the cruise ship, that fear of taking your phone and, and recording a video in public on the street. These fears that seem like nothing, they show up everywhere in your life. They show up everywhere in your business. And so learning to tackle them, especially in low stakes, starts building the muscle. Rule number two, believe. You go as far as you believe you can go. When the people around you say you're crazy, when you're putting in massive effort but you're not getting the results, where you sit alone and wonder, did you just make the biggest mistake of your life by starting this business? That is the time when most people quit and you need to believe more. Because if you love this thing, if you know that it's gonna impact people and you give up too soon, you will regret for the rest of your life knowing that you were capable of more and you just quit on it a little too early. So I look at my new book as an example. I did my tour across America, met with entrepreneurs all across America and found that people were struggling with the same thing. They wanna know how do I find what my purpose is and turn it into a lucrative business. Every city that I went to, even though that was not the topic I was covering, it came up over and over and over and over again, 23 different cities. And so I thought, I'm gonna write a book on this. This is gonna be my next book. I'm gonna take people through the process because my process works and it helped people live in, in 10, 15 minutes and they're getting, they're getting new ideas and, and results and here we go. Like they, they understand what path they need to take. Finally, they have clarity on what to do next. And so I told my agent and my lit agent, like, this is the next book I wanna write. We told publishers, this is the next book I'm gonna write. And from the start, it's been this big pull. It's been, it's been fighting. It's, we don't like the title. We don't like the concept. No, we're not gonna publish it. No, we're not gonna publish it. And I wanna do it by January because I wanna do my next tour across the rest of the United States, East Coast, Texas, Mexico. I wanna do my next tour. So I wanna have my book in stores by that time. And it's been this rough slog. 
where if I didn't believe in myself that this was so important with the people who are looking at it saying, nah, we don't like this concept. Nah, it's been written before. Now this method, we don't believe in. It's easy to quit. It's easy to give up. It's easy to say, forget it. I just know that it's gonna work. I know that the process helps people. I've seen it with my eyes across 23 cities over 90 days. I wrote the draft of the book and I gave it to some beta readers. And the number one piece of advice from people who've read both my books, the year one word and then this, like this is, this is the better book. This is the best book you've written so far, including my self-published ones. And so what do I do? I've got these people who are my audience who love it. And then these people who aren't my audience, but who make decisions saying, no, nah, we don't believe in it. I'm not going to quit. <laughs> I got to keep going. I got to do my tour. There's, there better be some crazy good reason for me not to do my tour, right? Even if I have to self-publish it. Now, I'm pretty close to making my deal, making it all happen and, and getting timelines and all that, but we don't have a signed contract yet and anything can happen. We're pushing the timelines because I'm pushing the timelines because otherwise this thing could drag on forever. When you have an idea that you love, that you know can have a huge impact, that's just taking longer than you hoped it would. When people are telling you that it's crazy and that it's stupid and that who are you to go off and do this thing? If you love it, you have to double down on it. You have to go in on it. You have to be open to getting help. But if that door closes, you try to find another one. And that's the story of every successful person. You're trying to do something different. Rule number three, become a shark. You haven't become a shark yet because you haven't decided that your mission is important enough. Now, being a shark doesn't mean that you have to become aggressive, violent, and angry. It means that you're pushing to be the best in your industry, a true leader, someone who makes a difference. And it starts with your mission. Raise the level of how important your mission feels to you and your entire life changes. So I look at my mission as an example. I wanna solve the world's biggest problem. It's never gonna happen. I'm trying to solve the biggest problem I think in the world, which is that lack of belief in yourself. The untapped potential is what I wake up every day trying to do. And the more that I put myself in a position of this thing matters, like what I do really, really, really matters. The more I can put myself in that mind frame, the bigger my thinking becomes, the bolder I get as a human and as an entrepreneur. And I look at the path that I've taken over the past X number of years. I look at being able to collaborate with someone like Eric Thomas when he gave a shout out in his video. That would have been something I wouldn't have thought of when I first started on YouTube. I look at the relationships that I built with people like Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and the people that we profile. Tony Robbins, I took the people on my team to go see him at Unleash the Power Within. I brought five, I think, of my people down and we're sitting up in the cheap seats. And then a year later, a year later, he invited me as his personal guest to sit right down in the front row. Chairman invited seating and I'm going back. I leave tomorrow. I don't know when this video goes up, but I leave tomorrow for Dallas to do it again. It's wild. Right? Like it doesn't feel like that stuff is possible. It comes from shifting the value of your, your mission. I deserve it because what I'm doing is solving a real problem. And we often feel like we're not capable of doing these great things. And we downplay our role and we downplay how important our mission is and we downplay what we think we can do. That's what needs to shift. That's what needs to change. You need to feel like the work you do matters. You need to feel like the mission you're on means something can have a big impact. And if you're approaching life in that way, everything in your business changes. Rule number four, never quit on something that you love. As long as you love it, you have to keep going. You cannot quit. Maybe one day somebody does throw you a bunch of money and you can stop sleeping in your office. Or maybe it's just a slow grind up and it takes you 10 years to become an overnight success. You'll never know how long it will take you to be successful. But what you do know is that if you quit on something that you love, you will end up regretting it for the rest of your life. As long as you love it, you have to keep going. You can't quit. So look at my story. It wasn't easy being an entrepreneur growing up. That's why I do so much to help entrepreneurs because I don't want you guys to struggle as much as I did. In my first real business when I was 19, I had to decide between earning $100,000 a year and traveling around the world in my dream job versus owning 30% of a company making 300 bucks a month and being unsure if anything's gonna work out or not. And I decided that I had to keep going. I had to try because I didn't want to end up being 85 years old looking back and saying I never did it, I never went for it. I would rather no one fail than not know. 
Because the things that you regret are rarely the things that you do. It's the things that you didn't do. The things that you had a chance to do. You had an opportunity, you thought about it, you felt it. But then you back down because you were afraid. Those are the things that you regret. That's what you regret most and I didn't want that to happen. But starting off my business wasn't easy. I struggled, I suck, I, I made it harder on myself because I told my friends that I was living the entrepreneur life and I couldn't hang out with them. Meanwhile, that $20 was just too expensive for me to go out and have beer with them, right? I isolated myself, I made myself lonely. I felt worthless as a human being. And the worst day of my life came when I told my business partner that I quit on him, that it was just too difficult, that I, I couldn't keep going, that I needed to feel like I, I was contributing, that that my time meant something, that all this work I was putting into something, I just need to feel valuable again, that I was contributing to something. Because <laughs> when you wake up every day and you're working and it's just not getting results, it can be real hard to keep going. And so I told him that I quit. I hung up the phone and then just started crying. And the next day I woke up and I just thought, I can't, I can't, I can't quit on this. Not yet, I haven't given everything I've got because I felt like in a year, in two years, in five years, in 20 years, I would look back and regret that I gave up. If I knew that I gave everything I had and it didn't work out, I was okay with the failure. It was just the idea of that thing lingering, that I could have given a little bit more, that I still liked this thing and I needed to see it through and I, and I didn't, that I quit on it. I knew that would eat me up forever. And so I had to get up that next day and tell myself, I'm not gonna quit yet. I just have to find a different way to stand. What I've tried so far has not worked. It has not worked. I'm making zero money. Well, 300 bucks a month. But it's not working out. And I hate myself. I hate my life. I hate how I feel about myself. I have to find a different way to stand. And that energy allowed me to keep going. That energy allowed me to then ask myself, who else has done this before? And I looked at Bill Gates and how he started Microsoft. And that started the path up for my business. And then two years later, I sold my company. And it happened pretty quick. All because I refused to quit on the thing that I knew I needed to see through. Also, if you want more motivation and confidence, check out our 254 series. The link is in the description below. The people who win work the hardest because they love what they do. If you're doing work that you love, you're more likely to follow through. You're more likely to do it because it doesn't feel like work because you love doing it. Find whatever the smallest first step is and then the smallest next step is and continue to build those steps. And when you look back, you'll have realized that you made some pretty significant progress. Rule number five, unlock your talent. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but instead of being world class at that thing, you settled for being just above average at something that you should not be doing. Albert Einstein once said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will believe its whole life that it is stupid. That's most people's problems. You are a fish and you're trying to climb a tree instead of going and being great at swimming. This is the exact problem that I am on a mission to solve. So I recently had a young entrepreneur come to one of my Toronto Q&A meetups that are free that I host every week. And he said, Evan, I have a problem. I'm trying to decide between what my parents want me to be, which is an architect, and what I feel a yearning towards, which is being a musician. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to decide. I don't know how I'm gonna be a success as a musician. I don't know how it's gonna work out. And my parents want me to be an architect and this is clearly defined path for how to do it. And he's afraid. And I think that's so many people. There's this safe, perfect path that has been designed that people have done forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Or there's this new, crazy, messy, unrealistic, unsafe, unsure path, which is following your passion, being an entrepreneur, and trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Here's the thing. If you only go down that safe path, if you only take that job, if you only listen to your parents or other people and, and you do what they want you to do, you're always gonna be unhappy. You're always gonna know that there was this thing inside you that you could have done, that you didn't take action on, and you hate it. It's never been easier to actually be yourself and build a business and have success being uniquely you, right? This was not open to your parents and definitely not your grandparents. The ability to be an entrepreneur on the side, making money using your phone is something that your grandparents don't understand. It's just, it's totally wild. And so you are a unique individual, right? You are, I am, we all are. You have unique interests, personality traits, belief systems. You're unique. You need to do something unique. If you are unique, 
you need to do something unique. If you're stuck doing the same thing that somebody else wants you to do, you're never gonna be happy. Now there may be some alignment. You may not absolutely hate the job that you're at, but you know you're capable of more. You're Michael Jordan. You are the Michael Jordan of something. You're a genius, an absolute bona fide genius at something. This is why I think it's the world's greatest problem. This is why I do what I do every single day in making this content and videos for you because I want to unlock people, hopefully more than one at a time, but even if it's just one person who watches this video and gets unlocked, I'm pumped because I think if everybody is off doing the thing that they are a genius at, man, I want to live in that world. Rule number six, keep up with the change. Every time YouTube updates their algorithm, you should be pumped. Anytime Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram makes an update, you should celebrate because this is your chance to win as an entrepreneur. Everybody else who's ahead of you, who've made it on the old algorithm before the update happened, they're complaining and wishing that it goes back to the way that it used to be. It's not going back. And the faster you can get on that train and understand how the new algorithm works, you are gonna soar past everybody else. Whenever something new comes along, it's gonna happen, guys. The new things that are coming along is only gonna speed up. There's gonna be more new things, not fewer new things. Every time a new thing comes along, you don't necessarily need to be the first one on it. I'm not saying that, you don't have to go off and try everything. But when something new is coming along, embrace it, because this is the future, right? Uh, so many people say, well, I'm not on social media, oh, that's for the kids. You gotta get on it. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to be on social media and not just giving it off to your kid or your niece or your nephew to do. You, you need to understand it. Doesn't mean you need to be the best at it, but you need to understand it because this is not just where marketing is going, it's where marketing is. Your business is suffering because you don't understand how to play the game. So Rome wasn't built in a day, but it didn't crumble in a day either. If you're not on social, if you're not taking advantage of new technologies, your business is slowly starting to crumble. And I don't want that for you. Rule number seven, play to win. Most people are so afraid to lose that they don't even try. So when you have nothing, when you're at the bottom, you've got nothing to lose. And so it's very easy to go off and try. But as soon as there are stakes, as soon as you've won just a little bit, now you risk losing something. And this is where most people back down and play small for life. And so you need to decide, are you playing life to win or are you playing life afraid to lose? So I look at my YouTube channel as an example. When I started it, there was no risk. Nobody knew me. Nobody was watching my videos. I could go and fail, didn't make a difference. I could try a whole bunch of different things. Whenever the algorithm changed, I got pumped because the people who were ahead of me were complaining and would, would be romantic and would want it to go back the way it was. And I'm like, hey, algorithm change, amazing. Let's go, I'm gonna learn that new thing. But now I've gotten bigger. Right now, I think I have more views than anybody in the entrepreneur space on YouTube. And it's easy to now be protective. It's easy to say, well, I built this thing I don't wanna lose. And I hate that. I need to, I need to destroy that. I wanna be constantly losing, constantly testing, constantly risking. Now, not risking at all, not, not putting everything on the line just for one thing, but to be willing to test, to be willing to fail. As an example, I split up my channels. I split up my channels into eight different channels. I got an advice from Matt Geelan. He's one of five people who, who I, I would put on my hand as people who I would listen to for YouTube advice, right? He was one of the five. And another one of the five said, don't do it. So I got five people who I would listen to about YouTube. One person says, split up your channel. One person says, don't do it. What do I do? I have to do it just to see because I know what not splitting up my channel looks like. It's what I'm currently doing. But splitting up my channel, I won't know if it's gonna work or not until I actually go off and do it. And so I did. And here's a news flash. It's not working yet, right? My other channels, the most I think has 8,000 subscribers. I have two around 8,000 subscribers and the others are, are smaller. And they're growing every day and they're gaining momentum every day. But overall, my subscriber growth is down. My views are down. My revenue is down. Everything is down. It's all down. Watch time is down. Everything is down. Is it a big failure? I don't know. Maybe. I'm gonna give it more time and see. I'm gonna give it more time and see. It's a risk, right? I went from making three videos a day on one channel to making one video a day across a couple channels. And then, you know, once a week on some channels and we have eight different channels now. It's more headache, it's more management. Maybe ultimately it will work out or maybe in six months I'll come back and say, man, that was a giant failure. That sucked. But I won't know until I try. 
And that's, that's where you need to risk it. That's where you need to try. You need to see, you need to test, you need to taste it. Rule number eight, stop hiding. The reason why you are not further ahead is you have told yourself that you are not capable of it. That's it. And you'll come up with really smart reasons that are based in logic as to why you're not more successful. You are a genius. You are excellent. And so you'll come up with really smart genius reasons as to why you are not further ahead right now. But at the end of the day, you're just afraid and you don't think you're capable. That's what I want to change in you today. So I sat down yesterday with an entrepreneur who is an up and coming entrepreneur. He's had a job for a long time. He's now in his mid fifties and he got let go from his job and he interviewed for another job and it didn't feel as a quite fit and, and he didn't get the job, but he doesn't want to go back and get another job. He wants to now go do his own thing. But there's that gnawing little voice in your head that says, who am I to do this? Who am I to be an entrepreneur? Who am I to bring value to others? Who am I to make money off this idea? Why not just go play it safe and get a job working with somebody else? And his one word was getting down to saying yes. Like, you have to say yes. And so this is where it's really important. When you know what you stand for, when you know what your core value is, whenever you see it and then you see your life not aligned with it, you're gonna be unhappy. If you're unhappy, if you need more boldness, more motivation, more confidence, more courage, look to your most important core value. Look, look at what you stand for. Look at who you are. Because if your one word is all about saying yes to things, then you have to say yes, right? You have to go off and do it because otherwise you live your entire life in regret. So here he is, this, this entrepreneur who's now in his mid fifties, who's been let go from his job, who's now trying to start up his own career, his own thing, just got his first speaking gig, just getting started with his YouTube channel and podcast and building momentum. And that's what it's all about. He has all the skills. He has all the talents. He's, he's been in this industry for decades. He knows what he's doing and yet he's afraid. He's afraid that he's not good enough. He's afraid that it's not gonna work out. He's afraid that people won't find his expertise, his knowledge valuable. And I think that's most people. I think, I think everybody's a genius. I think you're a genius. I think you have Michael Jordan level talents, skills at something. You're just doing the wrong thing. And we're afraid. You're afraid to take action. You're afraid to do the thing. And so you'll live your entire life with regret, knowing that you are capable of more. You right now know you're capable of more. Even if your friends and family and the people around you say, wow, you're doing such a good job, you know you're capable of more and you're not living up to your potential. That's most people. And why are you not living up to your potential? Because you're afraid of what that means. You're afraid of the obstacles you have to overcome. You're afraid of the difficulties that you have to go through. You're afraid of being judged. You're afraid of a failure happening and it being catastrophic and you not being able to recover. You're just afraid. And so we need to crush that. We need to crush that. We need to teach yourself that you do scary things. Rule number nine, concentrate on your effort. Most people don't concentrate long enough on achieving their goals. So what happens? You don't achieve your goals. If you're focused on something and you do it every day consistently, you will eventually get results. But if you're constantly jumping from one thing to another, from one idea to another, from one activity to another, then you'll never actually accomplish what you're capable of. The problem isn't lack of creativity or ideas or genius. It's a lack of concentration. And if that's you, I wanna fix it in this video today. So let's take a quick look at my YouTube journey. I started on YouTube over 10 years ago. It's crazy that it's been that long. And I wasn't very good when I started. Go back and watch my first videos. They're all still up there. I haven't deleted them. You can go back and watch every single one of them and see how much I sucked. I'm an introvert. This is not natural for me. It took a lot of concentration, a lot of focused effort, and 6,000 plus videos later, here I am. Why? Because I just kept going because I kept focused on my mission, on my objective. It took me 350 videos until I wasn't completely embarrassed by myself. 350 videos. I had to have my sister come, come into the room with the camera, focus on me, press record, and then leave because I couldn't film with her in the room. And that's my sister. How is this guy gonna be a YouTuber and, and be on stage and, and give speeches and be a thought leader and deliver presentations if you can't even do a simple video with your sister in the room? Concentration, focused effort. That's the key, it's been every single day we've been uploading videos. We've done three plus videos a day for the past five years, every single day. I've been sick, videos went up. I broke my neck in two spots, had a concussion, videos going up. I lost my voice, videos going up. All the time, every single day for the past five plus years, it's been at least three videos across my main channel now, my multiple channels. Concentration, I'm not very good at this. The point of all this isn't to, to brag or say look at me, it's saying that I suck that if I could do it, so can you. The difference is I think a lot of you guys are way more talented than I am. If I look at Alex, for example, who works for me at TDS, he's just so much more naturally gifted in front of the camera. 
he's funny, he's charismatic, a lot of the stuff that I'm not, and I've been slowly grinding away, getting better uh, in front of the camera. So I think a lot of you guys are actually better than me, or better than what I was. And if, if you just kept going, if you just kept working on it, you would, you would improve and you would have the results you're after. You're just not patient enough. You're not concentrated enough. You're not putting in the work every single day. This great story comes to mind that is, is great and sad at the same time. I was meeting a friend in Orlando, another influencer, uh, six years ago or so. And we met up and he said, I'm going to be the next Gary Vee. Like, okay, great. I love it. Pumped. Like, let's go. I'm, I'm just starting my YouTube career, really starting to take off. And he wants to be his thing and he's going to be the next influencer. I love it. And then he posted something about a year ago or so. And he said, you know, five years ago, I met Evan at this place in Starbucks in Orlando. And I told him I was going to be the next Gary Vee. And he was on his career to build his YouTube channel. And fast forward now and Evan's got, you know, a million, million and a half subscribers. And I'm still kind of where I was because I didn't put in the work. And so that's what I don't want for you, right? He just, he has talent. He's a genius. So are you. He just didn't do the five years of work that I did. And he's someone who's actually, I think, way more charismatic than I am. And so I don't want that for you. I want you to concentrate on your effort, which will then lead to results. And I'll give you a three-step process that you can follow to help you get there. Step number one is flip patience and impatience. People have this really messed up view on patience and impatience. I think people are often impatient with the results. So you, you want the results immediately. It's human nature, you want it immediately. But you're very patient with yourself. If you look at what you're doing every day, like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. You get an idea, yeah, I'll start Monday. I'll start next week. I'll start, in, I'll start next year. Fresh year, start off fresh, all that, right? No, you flip it. You flip it. You flip patience and impatience. What I want you to do is have patience with the results, that the results will come. And impatience with yourself, that today matters, today. You're watching this. I don't know what time it is during the day. You're watching this, today matters. What you create today has to mean something. Because if you approached every day with massive impatience for yourself and your effort, and you did that every day, you did the work, that you were proud of yourself for your effort, I promise you that the results are gonna come. But it will take some time to get to your big goals. You have big goals, right? You wanna, you wanna do something big, you have big ambitions. You don't want just some tiny little win. Awesome, that's gonna take some time. Even if you're hustling and grinding and being proud of your effort every single day, it's gonna take some time. So patience with the results and massive impatience with yourself. Number two is think big and act small. This is where I think a lot of entrepreneurs get tripped up. You need to think big and act small. So you have a big vision, a big mission, something that you wanna go off and change the world. My big thinking is I wanna solve the world's biggest problem, right? It's never gonna happen in my lifetime. And yet I wake up every day trying to tackle it. You want to have a big vision. The problem with it though, for some people, is that it means you don't start. Because to make that big vision happen, you need money, you need investors, you need camera gear, you need equipment, you need a team, you need all this stuff, right? Just keeps adding up all the stuff you need. And then you never start. That's the problem. The reason why some dummies are winning off of your idea instead of you is because they just started. Because they acted small. So you think big and that's the motivating dream that you're chasing down every day and you act small. What's the smallest thing that I can do today just to start building momentum? Because momentum is the thing that is missing in most businesses. You have great ideas, you're a genius, you're talented, I love what you're trying to do, it's amazing. You need momentum, momentum. Every single day, creating a little bit more momentum to make that dream come true. Think big, act small. And number three is schedule for success. Look at your calendar. Success is your habits. Right? You want to make sure that your actions map to your ambitions. The actions that are in your calendar, if you did those things, would help you accomplish your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So if you're talking about building a YouTube career, amazing. Show me in your calendar where every week you're making time to make YouTube videos. If you want to be an author, awesome, I'm pumped. Show me in your time, show me in your calendar where you've blocked it out that you're going to spend time writing on your book. Most people don't do it. And then you allow all these little things, these distractions to pull you away from the thing that you want to be doing. You have to put the big things into your calendar first and block off the time and protect that time and look at it from above and not just your business, your, your personal stuff too. What's a good relationship look like? What's a good health situation for yourself look like, right? Habits, put in your calendar and then step above it and look at the week that you're about to go off and do. Look at your week ahead. If you did those things consistently, would it help you accomplish your goals? And for too many people, it's no. 
you're, you're living in reaction mode to other people's emergencies and then you never get to do the thing that you want to do. You got to defend your time. You're scheduled for success. So whatever your big goals are, whatever you need to concentrate on, you need to make sure you're spending an appropriate amount of time on it so that you get good at it. So you can start getting results and making the impact that you know you can make. Schedule for success. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is ignore what others think. If you live your life based off the opinions of other people, you will never do anything great. Take a look at who you're worried about. People who are not happy with their life. People who never went and took their shot. People who spend their life complaining instead of trying to change something. Is that who you want to be so worried about what they think about your decisions? If anything, you want to do the exact opposite of what they're telling you to do. You don't want their life. So stop living your life by their rules. So I had an amazing one on one with an entrepreneur yesterday at my Q&A session here in Toronto that I do weekly. And I feel for her. She's such a, a talented, amazing, gifted entrepreneur. And we talked about your purpose coming from your pain. And she went through some massive pain that, that guided her to this success right now and, and on her path to personal development. But she's afraid to share what happened. And she said, maybe in a year or two, like give me a year to work on it and maybe I'll share it. Because she's afraid of what people will think. She's afraid that if it doesn't work out, that she may not be able to get another job. She's afraid of all these things that people might say about her if they found out the truth. The problem is that's your path. I don't care about what, where you're at right now. I need to know where you've come from. I need to know that you look like me. I need to know that your story is like mine. And so by living in the shadows and being afraid to tell the truth, what you're doing is one, not letting people connect to you as a real person, right? This fake perfect version of you isn't something that people can connect to. Two, you make it so that whatever you went through, it, you're telling yourself that it's, it's shameful and you're telling other people that it's shameful too. But if you come out and talk about what happened, then the people who feel ashamed about it, they now can come out and say, huh, I'm not the only one. This happens to other people too. I'm a little bit more normal. And three, if you want to build a business, if you want to create a YouTube channel, if you want to have a podcast, you want to be an author, you want to write a book, that's the thing that's going to actually help take you off. That's the thing. There was a, a great video that I told her about, about a woman who gained 70 pounds. Uh, from having a, a child. So she's pregnant, she gained 70 pounds, and she had a 10 pound baby, and now she had 60 pounds of extra fat on her, right? 60 pounds. So that's a lot. And so she's trying to lose it, and she's working out, and, and she's eating healthy, and she finally gets down to having uh, six pack abs and looking great. And then somebody noticed that when she bent over, that, that they could see the flaps of skin. When she stood up, it was all six pack, but when she bent over, there was flaps of skin. And what most people would have done is deleted that video, pretend like it didn't exist, not talk about that comments, right? Only show the perfect version. Look how much weight I lost. But she did something different. Instead, she said, yeah, that's my body now. That's what happens when you gain 70 pounds in pregnancy and pump out a 10 pound baby. And that became a rallying cry. That one moment of vulnerability of saying, hey, I'm still not perfect. Like, look, look at this saggy skin that I still have. That's what brought people to her. Now she's not just another mom who lost weight and did this workout plan and meal plan, right? That, that connection was real. And now she's built a million dollar plus business from selling e-courses and her recipes and everything else that she goes through. That's the thing. This is your competitive advantage. Your purpose, your pain, your story is your competitive advantage. I do not want to learn from you until I know that you've been through what I'm going through. I can't relate to that story, right? I can't tell that story. I can't tell a, a mom who gained 70 pounds how to lose weight. That's not my story. I can't relate to it. But helping entrepreneurs, I can, because I struggled and I suffered and I was making $300 a month and I was eating the same bean salad lunch every day and I celebrated with only McDonald's french fries because I couldn't afford to buy it. All of it. I struggled with, with fear and embarrassment and, and shame. All of it. I know what it's like. I've been through that. And why I do what I do now is because I want to try to make the path a little bit easier for the next generation of entrepreneurs, for you. 
I want you to feel like you're not alone. I want you to feel like there's a place you can come to with a beautiful community, a Believe Nation, where we're supporting each other. And there's content every single day across multiple channels that you can go and digest and dive into. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully make your path just a little bit easier. Because I wish I had this when I was getting started, when I was a 19-year-old entrepreneur who was insecure and and ashamed and embarrassed and not willing to talk to anybody about the problems I was going through, right? That's the thing that will connect people to you. But if you're so afraid of what people's judgments are gonna be, you're never gonna get started. I believe humans are built to serve. You're built to serve, you wanna help other people, it's hardwired into us. Studies show that the impact of serving other people has the same effect on your brain as food and sex. It's hardwired into you, you wanna help other people. And at the same time, you're afraid of judgment. So how do you help other people if you're also afraid of judgment? It's, it's having your foot on the gas and a break at the same time. You know you're capable of more, but then you just stand on the same spot. It's the worst. And so you have to let go of the opinions of other people. Some people may not like what you're doing. That's okay. That can't prevent you from service. That can't prevent you from fulfilling your mission. That can't prevent you from living the life you want because you're going to be 95 years old, looking back on your life and regretting it, knowing you're capable of more, but never taking action. Now I have a very special bonus clip that is around how to ask for help that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching the video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, whose opinion do you need to ignore? Number two, where do you need to stop hiding? And number three, what do you love that you will never quit on? You don't wanna ask for help because you're afraid. You're afraid that one, they're gonna say no, or two, that you are imposing on them. Either way, you're making a decision from a place of fear, doubt, and scarcity. It's time to step into your boldness. What would the most bold version of you do and make yourself proud? So I was on a call this week with David Bach, who is a super successful author. He's sold seven million plus books. He's got a new book out called The Latte Factor. And I was on a call with him because I said, David, I want you to be on YouTube. We need your advice, your wisdom, your energy on YouTube because you've got a great message that yes, you're delivering through books, but I wanna see it in video format. I think it's a great opportunity to reach people and because his audience is millennials, you need to be on YouTube. That's where they're hanging out. And, and he thanked me, I gave him a whole bunch of advice on how to get started and he's going to Florence and I gave him tips on, on what to talk about and how to film it and everything that just pure love for me to help him. And then at the end, he said something that I was uncomfortable with. He said, hey Evan, how can I help you? You've, you've given me so much, you've helped me with my branding and what I'm trying to do with YouTube, how can I be of service to you? And I said, I, I, don't, I don't know, man, I don't know. I don't, I don't usually ask for help. <laughs> I have a hard time asking for help. This is, this is a problem not just, not just for you guys watching, but for me too. I don't ask enough people for help. And so I said, well, I'm racking my brain. I mean, the point of this call wasn't to try to get you to help me, but since you asked, I've got a new book that I'm working on. Right, I'm trying to release it in December or January. You've sold seven million plus books. What advice do you have? And he gave me a whole bunch of fantastic advice. Step by step, his process to selling books. One of them that was particularly helpful was having a Facebook group as a launch team. So people who bought his book joined the launch team and helped spread the mission for him. And he said that contributed to a huge chunk of his early sales. And so right away that night, I went and I created my launch team. So if anybody joins now and it's 50 bucks, you get the first copy of the book, you're gonna get a pack of My Entrepreneur Heroes trading cards, you're gonna get an autograph, you're gonna get uh, access to me in a weekly live stream on Facebook, just for me and the people who've pre-ordered the book. And I just implemented it, right? We'll, we'll, put the, we'll put the link up here, so if you wanna join, you can go check it out. But we just implemented that because of, of David's advice, because of what he told me, because he said, hey, how can I help you? And so I need to do a better job of asking for help as well. I need to get over my fear of people either rejecting me or feeling that I'm imposing on them. And, and it's a goal of mine. It's something that, that I wanna work towards because if I look at the projects I'm doing, if I look at my new book, I'm pumped for it. I think it's gonna help a lot of people. The, the people who've read it, um, part of my beta audience, they say it's the, the best book that I've written. And, and if I don't ask for help and I don't get it out there, I'm cheating myself and I'm cheating my audience. I'm cheating the world, I'm cheating you guys. And so I need to ask people for help. So this video, as much as, as it's for you, is for me too. I'm gonna listen to my own advice and make it happen. So I've got a three-step process that I'm gonna use myself that I'd love for you to try on too, see if it works for you. 
Step number one is apply the Wayne Gretzky rule. Wayne Gretzky famously said, you miss 100% of the shots that you never take, right? If you don't take the shot, you're not gonna get a goal. So even if it's not gonna work out, even if you get a no, great, you get up and you ask again, because you're gonna miss every shot if you don't take it. And this is for anybody who's afraid to ask. And I remember watching this fantastic clip from Oprah Winfrey, who she got hit up when she was successful and she got hit up for uh, donating to different charities and donating to different causes. And she always felt like she had to say yes to people. And there was one time when somebody then asked her for money and she said no. She's like, I'm being stretched too thin. I can't commit to everything. And she said no. And the guy who asked her said, okay. And she said, okay, really? You're, you're not, you, you don't hate me? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's okay. On to the next. And so taking that same approach, you know, you ask for help. Your intentions are good. You're not asking for the world. You're asking for a little bit of help and, and then don't attach significant meaning to it if they say no or they don't deliver. Not everybody's gonna be able to help you out even if they have the ambition or the intention. Some people are really busy. I had a guy write to me today who wants my help in promoting something that he has coming up and I just have too much on the go right now with my Thought Leadership Academy and then the YouTube course coming up and then the book to be able to do this new joint venture and commit myself fully to it. And so, okay, maybe something comes in the future, maybe not. You have to ask and get over the fear that they're gonna say no. Because chances are they won't care that much. If it's a no, they still love you, they still want you to be successful, and that's okay. You miss every shot that you don't take, so take your shot. Set number two is don't take the yes away from somebody. And so these are this is for the people who are afraid to impose, you're afraid of imposing yourself on somebody, or now you feel indebted to them and, and that it's a big burden for them. The thing that I always remind myself of is maybe they wanna help. You know, I love helping people. When I got on the call with David, he had a really tight window before he left for Florence and I, I, I wanted to make it work. So like, yes, let's make it work in this time window. I'm pumped to help him just to serve because because I want to help because I want to see his message get out there. There's a lot of people who want to help. And if you don't ask, you're taking the yes away from them. You're cheating them. You're being selfish. You think you're being selfless. You think it's selfish to ask. I think it's actually selfish not to ask. Because for some people, acts of service is the greatest thing of all time for them. I love being able to help David. If I didn't reach out, maybe he wouldn't have asked me, right? And then we would have missed that great opportunity together. And so by you not reaching out, by you feeling like you're imposing on them, recognize that you might actually be being extremely selfish and you need to ask because you're taking the yes away from them. And saying yes to some things and helping people out for some people is the greatest thing they love of all time. So don't take the yes away from them. Don't assume that it's a no. And then step number three is what would the boldest version of you do? Try to remember that. It's what I try to remember for myself all the time. And yes, I've had success and built my channels to these sizes and sold businesses, but it's still nothing compared to what I'm capable of. And it's easy to wake up and just stay where you are, right? It's easy to, to wake up and just stay exactly where you are. I wanna do more. I wanna be bigger. I wanna be bolder. I wanna, I wanna solve the world's biggest problem. You know, I need to remind myself of that consistently. And, and I don't do a good enough job of it, to be honest, on a, on a daily basis. It's not every single day that I'm feeling unstoppable and massively bold. And so having that reminder for myself too is what would the boldest version of you do? You're afraid to do this. You're afraid to ask this person. What would the boldest version of you do? And I asked myself that, and then I do it. So a quick example for my last tour, I was doing this tour, 23 cities, 90 days, and we're trying to figure out transportation, how we're gonna go around. And I wrote to Grant Cardone, friend of the channel, done a lot of videos together. And I said, hey Grant, can I have your jet for 90 days to tour around <laughs> and I'll promote you, right? We'll do that as an exchange. And it costs a lot, just the jet, the fuel, the pilots, all that, it's a lot of money. And I said, what would the boldest version of me do? So I would ask Grant, so I wrote to Grant. And he responded back and to his credit said, what's the upside? That was his response, a quick short email, what is the upside? And instead of just saying no, which you which probably should have, uh, he just said, what's the upside? And I told him, hey, I'll talk about you and my audience and everybody will know your name. And it wasn't a big enough upside, so he said no, awesome, and we rented a Suburban and we drove across America. But you may not win all those battles, you may not get a yes every time, right? Since then, Grant and I have done a lot of different things together, more videos together, more content, promoting each other. That one no doesn't destroy the relationship. But being bold, being willing to ask the question, even if the most likely outcome is no, it's only the most likely outcome. 
And if you keep asking, just back to the Wayne Gretzky rule, somebody's gonna say yes. So ask yourself, not just for this situation, but in general, what would the boldest version of you do? What would the version of you that would make yourself proud do? And then go do that. If you wanna see 10 more rules from me, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. One of the, the biggest reasons why you are not more successful is you're just not consistently working hard enough at it. Most people don't fail enough. Most people are so afraid